Um, it was, it was a shock for sure. Um, I think I, for me, I was actually asleep and uh, my agent called my fiance. She woke me up out of a sleep, like literally about, I think like, it was right after the deal had been made and I think Shams had already tweeted it out. And that's how we found out. And then, um, you know, I, I went to the gym the next day, get my stuff. And uh, then I talked to Brad and uh, Joe and a couple other guys uh, that was there at the gym. but. It was definitely uh, it was definitely shocking to find out that way, uh, especially because the week before I was already told that we were good and you know they weren't. It was no trade talks to me and uh, I was good. So you know we was expecting that. But for me, I understand the business uh, side of it, and uh, I've always been like that. And anybody knows me knows that you know I'm the first one to tell people you can't put personal with business. It just doesn't mix. And if you do, you're gonna get yourself hurt. So. I understand it as a business, uh, but for me, it was just the courtesy. You know, you guys probably, they already, as you guys, they probably already knew that I, they were thinking about trading. They had this trade in their back pocket just in case something else didn't happen. And for me, it's just a simple fact, hey, we're thinking about trading you, most likely we'll trade you. Just letting you know, thank you, I appreciate that. You know, especially with everything, you know, telling me the week before and then, you know, my house flooding and having to deal with that. So it was, it was, a, it was a, a lot, a lot at once, but um, I love this team. Uh, I love this organization. I love the people, the fans, and everybody, you know, uh, the support that I have always gotten here for my nine years. Um, I'm definitely going to miss it, um, but I'm excited and energetic to start, you know, um, you know, my new chapter in my life with the Grizzlies. So. Right, like, like you said, it's a business. The other side of that is that a team obviously wants you, right? Yep. That's why they made that deal. Yep. What's the first thing that crossed your mind when you thought about the Memphis Grizzlies and you joined them? Oh, it was, it was right when I heard it, I was like, you know what, at least I'm going somewhere, like you said, to a team that wants me and a team that I can compete, you know, to, to, to hopefully, you know, try to win the championship. And we got a lot of great young players with the Grizzlies, and I'm very excited. You know, I love the way that they play. I love the culture. <coughs> Excuse me. And just like here, you know, in Boston, you know, I fit right in. It's, it's right up my alley, the style of play and the mentality that they bring to the game. Well, what's been your reaction to, it seems like the city has been, a lot of people been down about the trade. They, they didn't want to lose you. You know, what have the people been saying in the streets to you? What have you been back? It seems yeah. like a collective kind of depression. People trying to get over what happened. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I, I grew up here, you know, nine years here, um, you know, in the city. Um, you know, I've done stuff in the city, you know, to, to, to become more acquirable to the city for myself. And, you know, I just built a special bond with the fans and, and the people of Boston. You know, I don't think there's no place in Boston that I can go where, you know, I wouldn't be welcome. And uh, that speaks volumes. Um, it's definitely tough. I'm hearing it all the time from everybody, um, the fans, every time I see them, they're devastated. The city is devastated. Um, and, you know, I understand why we grew up together, you know, so it's definitely tough. It's definitely hard to say goodbye. I know talking to some of these fans, I definitely get emotional. Uh, you know, they're coming up to me and they're balling. So, um, I definitely have heard, you know, everybody's disappointed, but like I said, you know, it's a business first. Uh, Boston will always be in my heart. I love Boston, but, you know, they decided to, that they they made a move where they thought was best for the team, and that's all you can ask for. What do you think of the team's outlook going forward? Say it again? What do you think of the team's outlook going forward? Jalen, Jason, kind of taking things into the future, Ben Adam, Chris Stavs. What do you think it's going to be like for those guys going forward? And them kind of, I guess, having to step up as leaders going forward without you. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun for those guys. It's gonna be challenging. It's gonna be ups and downs, but that's the beauty about growth. You know, that's another part of their game that they're just gonna continue to evolve in. And you know, even though I won't be here a part of it, I'm still proud of those guys, and I can't wait to see the growth that they're coming. But I'm excited to see the next step that they take in their games. Um, not from a basketball standpoint of on the court, but a leadership role, and uh, you know, really taking on of this team. No, my house has been flooded since uh, we played in Dallas in January. So I haven't been in my new house since uh, ever since I proposed to my fiance. The next the next month, my house flooded, and we've been dealing with that ever since. We finally just fixed it up, and the move-in date is actually next week. So um, it was tough. It was a tough conversation with Brad. Uh, he was he was very emotional. Um, but like I said, you know, I'm I'm sure there's a lot more that went into it that probably won't be said, can't be said. But it's all love, and Brad knows that we've had our talks over the years. We've had our moments, and 
I grew up with Brad as well. My first year was his second year, so it was definitely an emotional talk for him. But like I said, the love will always be there, and, and um, there's no hard feelings for me. Do you have any regrets over the past couple of years of getting close, getting to the finals, falling short this year? Is there anything that, you know, I guess any regrets about how those seasons went? Yeah, uh, not actually getting this one. <laughs> That's probably my only regret. You know, I love the journey that I've been a part of with this organization, with this team. Um, I couldn't ask for more. You know, the only thing I regret is that you know we didn't we didn't get it when we had our chance when I was here. Uh, but other than that, I've enjoyed my run. Uh, I'm very thankful to the organization, to the city, to my teammates uh, for allowing me to be me um, and really taking me in. You know, a Dallas kid, you know, from the South Side, Lancaster, Texas, transferred to Flower Mound, and then came up here to Oklahoma State, and then came to Boston. So. You know, to be able to take me uh, with everything I have, who I am, and just allow me to be me, I say thank you. Yeah, so if you talk to your teammates, your teammates in Memphis, what do you think about the opportunity to play with Ja when he comes back? People are kind of saying you could be a, maybe a mentor to him because he's going through some tough times. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I've had the you know the pleasure of you know, uh, talking to everybody. You know, Bain, uh, Desmond Bain's birthday was a couple of days ago, I think about a week ago, two weeks ago. I told him happy birthday. Uh, you know, you could tell, you know, they're, they're a young team. I'm, I'm the second oldest behind Steven Adams. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I'm used to being the youngest, but, you know, it's a great young team, and uh, you can definitely tell that they're ready to work. Um, and, yeah, everybody keeps saying that, you know. Um, you know, it would be a perfect fit for me, you know, with my veteran, um, you know, skills that I have, my mentality, my attitude, and, and just, you know, seeing the game differently. So, for me, I, I'm excited and ecstatic to be able to go play with a player like Ja, um, who's still evolving and uh, still has a lot to go. And uh, I'm glad to be part of his his progression as well. So, you know, I'm going to do everything in my my ability to help this team, Memphis, and, and help Ja and, and all these players become the best that they can be. Who were some of the uh, teammates that, that reached out, former teammates now that reached out? What were those conversations like? Every, every person, every, every teammate on the Celtics have reached out. Um, some have posted on Instagram, or Twitter, or social media, but uh, everyone has texted me or called me, and it was very emotional. Um, you know, it's definitely not the same um, talking to those guys. Um, it, it, it was it was hard. It was hard, you know, just seeing the text, hearing the guys' voices, saying the goodbyes, you know, uh, saying rem reminiscing on the good times and. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, just to be able to, to be with one group of guys in a, in a city for so long, um, it's tough. But, you know, I actually want to clear up something I seen online that it was going around that because JB didn't, didn't post something about me like JT did, that we had beef. Jason and Jalen are my brothers for life. Uh, and I don't think what anybody's, what people see isn't enough of what and how our relationship really is. We've been through a lot together. We've been through a fire. My mom passed away. JB was actually one of the people on that plane that came to Dallas to the funeral. So I just wanted to shut all rumors down now that me and JB have beef. I have no beef with anybody with the Celtics, none of my teammates. I love those guys. They love me. We're brother, and I know that if I'm ever in need or need or want anything, I can call those guys and it's vice versa. But me and JB, we're great. That's my brother. He actually texted me, and he was just as disappointed as I was. So. We're good, and just because JB did, or any of my teammates didn't post anything doesn't mean that we have any beef or something going on. So I just wanted to clear it out on that, but there we go. How do you still see yourself being back in Boston, Australia, the game of Hardy I think Jason even said, like, we gotta get back together one day and have posts. Like, how, what is your last connection Yeah, it was, you know, the post with JT was, was you know, very emotional, you know, but uh, for me, Last impression was, you know, just those fans. You know, we, we gave it our all. We, we obviously, uh, we didn't do and stand up to the standards that we set for ourselves early um, with our last uh, series with the Heat, and we lost in game seven at our place, but those fans were still there rocking. And at the time, didn't know that that would be my last game as a Boston Celtic, but the impression that those fans left on me will always be remembered. And, and like I said, I'm thankful to, to even have the opportunity to be able to, to say that I played for the Boston Celtics. An opportunity to think about what it might be like that first game back in Boston? Have not. Have not. Um, um, I've been kind of trying to wrap my head around everything else right now that's going on, you know, with the wedding, moving, the flood. So it, my mind has been everywhere. So I haven't actually got to sit down and think about what that day would be like coming back. But I'm sure to be an emotional one, and uh, I'm prepared for it. Marcus, I mean, you, you, got, you got 33 tattooed on your shoulder. 
to wear 36. Do you have a number you're going to wear in Memphis? I still got 36, and 33 was actually – so when I went to Oklahoma State, my number was originally three. My brothers were number three. Uh, my oldest brother passed away. That was his number. So I wore three, but because in 2001, the Oklahoma State boys basketball team plane crashed, they retired everybody's number. So 33, I chose 33 because not a jersey number, but that's the age my brother was when he passed away. So it's more than a jersey number. So I'm kind of glad I got rid of 33. I really didn't want it, but uh, 36 is still the number. So okay. it'll still be 36. Okay. Do you have one memory from your time at the Celtics that stands out about? Yeah, uh, for me, I would probably have to say um, the one memory is last year um, when we made our finals run, how close we became. Um, and uh, it really started after, you know, uh, the comment where it got kind of taken out of context of what I was saying about how other teams are guarding the Jays. And uh, we, went through a, we went through a stretch where it was tough for us. And then for us to be able to click like we did and then get on and make our run was it's very memorable. Right, appreciate you. Thank you, guys.